Hey guys, Trevor here at Vigilant Guitars. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Uh, today we have a really cool video about neck through guitars and some of the considerations that I have when I'm building them and some considerations for you when you're ordering them. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, it's a big help to the channel and us here at Vigilant. If you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, if you have some ideas or comments, leave them down below. We'd love to hear from you, but let's get into the show. So what is a neck through guitar? A neck through guitar is basically one piece of wood running all the way through from the headstock to the back end of the body as one continuous piece of wood with no joint from the body to the neck. That's a neck through. Now why would you want a neck through? There are a lot of considerations. One of them just being access to the upper frets. Because there is no neck joint, you're essentially able to cut away all kinds of wood and get full access up to 24th frets or even beyond. Um, some of the other considerations too are durability. Uh, the neck through joint uh, is as strong as a guitar can be. There is no weak point either at a bolt-on or a set neck construction. So uh, they're a much, much more robust construction style. Some of the considerations though with the neck through are that they are a bit more expensive. You do have to have a longer length of wood to start with. The wood has to be straighter, it has to be stronger. Um, and with that as well, the finishing process when you apply a lacquer, stain, paint, um, you're using this big unwieldy you know, platform. You can't isolate a bolt on neck or a set neck and then attach them at a later time. You have to finish this whole thing all at once, so it's a little harder to get in there for level sanding, polishing, glossing, buffing. Um, the added durability is great, but on the finishing and construction side, it's a lot more complicated. So the model I have in front of me is our Heron Base. This is one of our neck through models. It's only featured as a neck through, so it's a great place to start. What it has is multi-laminate beams running all the way through the neck here, and what it has are two wings that are glued to the side. Right now I have it in a state of deconstruction so it's nice and easy to move around. The multi-laminate beams run all the way from the body to the tip of the head and that gives us its strength. And what it has is the ability for me to fully sculpt the whole neck profile all the way up to the lower horn and give players that full access all the way up to that 24th fret where other models like our Quadra or other bolt-on models or set neck models, um, you would have limitations in that aspect. The unique aspect of the Heron here is that both of these wings can be milled out and worked on separately. Oftentimes you'll see the Heron with a figured top, maple, burl, cottonwood. Um, those are some of the more popular choices, but I can apply that to the top, glue it, work on it separately, and then once I'm all ready, finished and working the neck, apply that. Now the advantage of that is that I can do all the working, level the frets, get full access to the neck profile all before gluing the body on top. But it does kind of limit what I have to do here to transition down to the platform. A ramp needs to be constructed to transition from the fret wire all the way down to the finalized top of the body. Depending on the type of bridge that I use for this, I have to calculate the total thickness of this ledge here and then build the body around that creates this sort of ramping effect and exposes the laminations of the neck through on the top and the back. Some people don't like that look, some people love that look, but that's a main feature of the Heron Base neck through construction. So here's a basic base bridge that we have in stock. What I have to consider when I'm building this style of neck through is the minimum saddle height between the top where the string breaks and the base plate. That distance will determine this ledge going from where the uh, string makes contact with the fret crown down along the finished top height. I need that to be calculated and mill out this whole ledge and then calculate that ramp. This is also going to have to come into balance with the electronics down here because I have to have just enough room for potentiometers, batteries, things of that nature to balance between an acceptable thickness, the string break, and then also this ramp so you get perfectly low action and all the adjustments necessary. So what I have in front of me now is our sigil model. It's a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. It's also one of our selective neck through models. Doesn't come as a set neck, doesn't come as a bolt on, just a neck through. But you'll notice that it features a different style of construction. You'll have this figured top. On the top, again, flame maple, flame walnut in this case, um, but it stretches across the entirety of the face of the guitar. And when I take it off, you can see that neck through beam stretches all the way through. 
Now the advantage to this style of construction is that I can hide all kinds of stuff in the substrate here. I could have chambers to really lighten the weight. I could have control cavity routes that zigzag and make it easy for me to do the assembly process. And all I know is that I can hide anything through this top once it comes to glue up. But the tricky part about this is that now I have an issue with my neck pickup. If I wanted to apply a neck pickup to the figure top, it'd be a pretty tricky route to have a plunge router and work around the fretboard overhang here because the ledge is in the way. It's quite cumbersome. Um, I've already done this with the intent to just have a bridge pickup in place, which negates the whole finicky process around here. So for this particular build, I'm gonna be using a Tunematic style bridge from Hipshot. Uh, it sits a little bit taller off of the body than say a flat top style six saddle bridge, fender style. And so what I have to do is calculate the minimum saddle height from this bridge and then calculate that drop off for this ledge and how that's gonna sit over top of the figured um, top here. Now, this style of construction won't have that distinct heron style ramp because you need that nice sharp 90 degree angle uh, for the top to sit and make a nice perfect clean joint. So here is our Oswego model. This is a full Monty custom guitar. We've got harpoon headstock leading into a bound fingerboard, figured maple top. It's almost finished, so it's a great example of seeing that full neck access all the way up through, up to the high regions of the fingerboard. So this Oswego features a Floyd Rose bridge. It's been recessed into the top of the figured maple all the way through the neck through construction and comes out the back for the springs and the claw to attach and float the bridge. It also features a bound fingerboard. It's got cream binding on top of this um, obsidian maple fingerboard and it leads into a neck pickup here at the top. So because of the Floyd Rose route being so complicated with the bushings, the fine tuner recess and the platform, I have to apply the top and then route from the top through the back a nice clean Floyd Rose route, all while the fingerboard is not glued on because I need a flat surface for all my templates and everything to go nice and clean. In this case, as opposed to the other two cases of the sigil and the heron, the fingerboard is the last thing to get glued on. And because it's also bound, I have to have the fingerboard and the binding perfectly applied at the dimensions for the locking nut, also feeding into the taper of the fingerboard, um, glued and applied and then carve the neck around it without sanding through the very, very thin cream binding. So when we're building a neck through guitar, there's a lot of considerations we have to make, whether it's the Heron, the Sigil, the Oswego, really depending on the hardware, the pickups, the configuration, and just even something as simple as binding might totally change the whole configuration process. The pricing of the instrument, the labor, all of that has to be considered. I really do love making neck through guitars. It's just such a fun process, carving all the necks by hand, getting that seamless transition just right for the model, seeing the premium woods come all the way through. Uh, we're doing this old school, we're not machining these out. It's all done by me, by hand. We're using card scrapers, rasps, sandpapers, and we're just getting a perfectly organic transition here. It's the best way to construct an electric guitar, and it's really just the premium experience you can get here at Vigilance. So really enjoy making them and hope to make more for you guys. Thank you guys for watching, we really appreciate it. If you like this video, please leave us a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos from us, shoot us a comment down below and we'd love to hear from you. And if you want to start your own neck through guitar, give us a shout at vigilantguitars.com. All right, take care guys. <laughs>